Hey friends, that magical moment has come. It is time for us to learn what happens when we let go of our poi rather than holding on to them. That's right, today we're diving into poi throws. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, bringing you poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I am teaching you how to throw those poi but like not in frustration, right? Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So real talk, between the heat, the length of my hair, and the wind, I feel like I look an absolute mess right now, and I hope that y'all are cool with that and you're here with me for it, yeah? But you're not here for my vanity, you're here for poi, and I shall oblige. Um, we have literally spent the past 11 weeks talking about all the different sundry things that can happen when we hold on to our poi and don't let go of them. Um, but I also wanted to give you all some information about what happens when we do let go of them, when we do things like throws. Uh, namely because it's become a really integral part of modern day poi styles and such to the point that it's really completely changed the way that poi are made in the past decade. See, like, I'm old enough to remember when every set of poi came with a set of handles that were meant to tie around your fingers. The idea of having a free floating handle that you could let go of was totally unheard of at the time and if that was the thing that you wanted you usually had to make it for yourself but since the popularity of contact poi has exploded uh, having ball handles that you can release and use the poi to throw or do contact rolls with has really become the dominant paradigm and I've already done an entire series on the basics of contact poi that I'll link to down in the description but I also wanted to show you guys just a little bit of what happens when you do throw the poi because it's still pretty cool. So you're really only going to need one poi for most of the work that we're doing today. Uh, and I'm going to teach you what I think are the two most popular types of poi throws. First up, in-spin throws, as well as isolated throws, yeah? So just to start off with, we're going to get us over our first hurdle. That is, spin the poi and let go of the handle, and whether you catch it or not is totally up to you. Don't even try to do like any kind of more ornamental throw and everything. Just play around with what it feels like to release the poi and try to catch it, right? Um, this is really just to get you comfortable with the idea of the poi leaving your hand for however long, and whether it comes back to your hand or not is totally immaterial. It might fly off to the side, it might go up way higher than you anticipate, or it might not go up at all. Just play around a little bit and see what initially happens with that. Now with your poi spinning clockwise, I want you to bring your hand over to your left hand side, and as the poi is coming up and around above your hand, I want you to just release the poi. See if it goes straight up, see if it goes over to the side, see what happens there, yeah? Now your mission is to try and make it go in a given direction. Generally speaking, when the poi goes straight up, it's because we release the poi right about when it is horizontal or just before, right? When it goes off to the side, it's usually after it has come to like, uh, almost like a, uh, a 45 degree angle or a little bit more than that, right? Really what I want you to do is see if you can get the poi traveling from one side of your body to the other. So once it feels comfortable throwing the poi from one side of your body to the other, it's time to see if we can control how much it rotates in the middle of that. Namely, I want you to see if you can get the poi to spin around once. So we have this moment where the head kind of is dropping down in front of our eyeballs before the poi rotates off away Away from us like that. I want you to actually physically have that moment where you have the eye check of the poi head kind of rotating in space directly in front of your eyeballs. What this is designed to do is put enough rotation on the poi so that as it leaves your hand over here, you wind up with this moment when the tether is straight up because we want the tether pointed straight down when it gets over to your right hand side. Ideally, we want the poi oriented like this when you catch it so that its momentum will continue to carry it around down below your hand. That way when you catch it, it's like you haven't even lost a beat. It's integrated with the poise motion, you see? 
So give some practice to that. This was one of those things that it took me a little while to feel completely comfortable with, but I was lucky that I had a guy here in DC that knew this trick and could show me how to try and orient the poi so that the handle was pointed down on the other side. So that way I wasn't like trying to catch any wild throws or anything like that as it went from side to side. It would inevitably wind up in a position where it took little to no effort to catch it and bring it back to wherever I wanted it to be, yeah? And uh, a big thank you to Ian Creer for being the guy who taught me this part of the throw, yeah? And of course, if you practice this with both hands, you can use it to do a thing such as if you get into a reverse weave, you can actually do one of these throws on each side of the reverse weave. Doing an in-spin with your right, doing an in-spin with your left, letting them go across. I'm a big fan of this one, honestly. You can also, of course, when you're in wall plane, playing around with whatever, you can have this thing happen where one of your hands goes underneath the other one, and the way you get out of that is to throw the poi rather than having to worry about anti-spinning back out of it, yeah? Pretty handy, I would say. Okay, so now let's talk isolated throws. Start off with your poi spinning in wheel plane over to your side, and I want you to practice just letting it go and letting it kind of hang there in midair. Just like, almost imagine that you're picking the poi up off the ground, and you're just lightly tossing it to a friend who's over in front of you, yeah? The idea here is almost exactly the opposite as when we're doing in-spin throws, where we're trying to make sure that there's a bunch of energy on the poi and tether when we let it go. In this case, we're actually trying to rob the poi and tether of energy as we let go of them. You'll know you've got this right when you can actually see the poi just kind of hanging horizontal in space there for just one second before it drops back into your hands. That's the perfect placement that we're looking for here. It is really, really, really important that the poi just goes up and comes straight back down inside of the space that is being released in. That is, it doesn't move forward at all, doesn't move back at all. It just moves straight up and down. Okay, so once you've gotten to the point where this feels comparatively natural, now you get to add some momentum to that tether. Um, the first one that we're gonna play around with is you're actually going to give the tether as you're letting it go, just a little bit of a flick with your thumb. And what that's going to do is it's going to start spinning the poi around the head in such a way that it's going to spin backwards back into your waiting hand. So think, flick the tether around back into your hand, flick the tether around back into your hand. If you really nail this, you can almost see that what's happening is that the tether is just spinning around the poi head as it's kind of hanging out in space and everything, yeah? Pretty cool, right? But the fun doesn't end there, because as it turns out, this place where we're releasing the poi is kind of neutral in terms of momentum. So not only can we flick the tether down and around, we can also flick the tether up and around. That is, we can get it spinning forwards instead of reverse. This is one of my personal favorite throws. It really looks for a second as though you've either defied gravity or you've defied the momentum of the poi in order to make it happen. Give that one a shot. And as an added treat, guess what? We can also flick the tether off to the side, really making it look like we're defying gravity here. Uh, this is a throw that I learned from Ronan McLaughlin years ago and that I still think just looks unbelievably cool. If you want to look super duper slick, you can practice these throws with both hands at the same time. And hey, maybe you have one hand do one throw and the other hand do another throw. Say one of them going forward and the other one going backwards, or say having both of them going off to the side like that. The sky's the limit here. Cool, so let me show you both of these throws in slow-mo right quick.
Amazing. So um, I hope this gives you all just a little bit of fun that you can do with your poi, throwing them around, hopefully in a controlled manner and not so much in a frustrated one. Uh, go ahead and uh, shoot some video of yourself playing around with these, post it to Instagram or Facebook and tag me. I am Drex Factor on Instagram and Drex Factor Poi on Facebook. I would love to see your hard work. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment because it helps other people find these videos and this channel, and that way more people can learn and grow with all of us. Yay! And of course, if you are digging these videos and you're enjoying this project, please consider signing up to support the work that I do over on Patreon, like all of these nice folks did. Um, Patreon has been the thing that has kept me fed, has kept a roof over my head, and has kept me charged up throughout all of quarantine. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the people that have signed up to support me on there. Um, if you have the means to do so, and absolutely no judgment if you don't, but if you do, uh, please consider heading on over to patreon.com slash draxfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some great behind the scenes stuff. So go check that out. Wow. So that was my last trick tutorial of the quarantine. I, I, I can feel a tear coming on here. Uh, tomorrow, of course, we're going to wrap all this up in a combo that is going to use multiple tricks that we've learned over the course of the past few weeks. So I hope you will join me there to put a little cherry on top of this project. Yeah, I'll catch you then.